So if you're backtracking to find the core problem, it's very important also to realize the possible natures of these core problems and also how they link to other levels. So one of the simplest problems is just a purely physical problem. A purely physical problem can be uh, a wound or an infection and the nice thing of it is that if it is purely physical also if you resolve it on a purely physical level it will be gone. So if there is a wound and the wound is uh, healed, end of story. So physical problems uh, by themselves are usually relatively easy if they're not chronic. If you have a chronic physical problem, you're in for a world of problems. Because the physical is really the basis, you could say it's the, the hardware which one runs the emotional programs, the mental programs and the spiritual programs. And if somehow your hardware is not functioning, then all the other things also won't function. So if the person has, for instance, a chronic illness or a chronic imbalance in their, uh, in their bodies or in their metabolism, this will affect their energy flows and the meridians, which in turn will affect their emotions, which will affect their thoughts, which will affect their energy bodies, and by having a different energy body you also start attracting different energies, different people, and it can rapidly cascade into a complete chaos. So physical problems can lead to problems on all other levels very, very easily. And um, it is therefore also very important um, if you're really diagnosing your client and treating your client is to really at least to compensate for physical problems as soon as possible because there is no telling how it will in a way cascade into other levels. So physical problems always need to be dealt with immediately. There's always an emergency to it. And um, you can often create bypasses of energy through, so that the affected physical areas won't have as strong an impact on the energy body as otherwise would happen. A bypass is not a solution, however. It is just a temporary um, thing you can do to resolve the situation while the body is recovering. The same way also all other levels of problems can manifest as a physical problem. So the physical is often very easy to spot and has a lot of repercussions on all other levels. And um, this will often cloud all the other issues because people tend to be very aware of physical problems, they tend to focus solely on that and not see any deeper causes of it. So one layer up we come to the emotional problems. Uh, emotional problems often cause physical problems because often emotions have a lot of stress involved and these stress patterns will generally unbalance the, the physical body. Emotional problems tend also to reflect quite strongly on the thought patterns. When people are emotionally disturbed they tend to think also in ways which are colored by their emotions. Very positive, very negative, very focused on themselves, very focused on something else, on some other thing. So um, emotional problems tend to spread very easily into the physical and into the mental, not so much into the spiritual. Generally spiritual energies tend to be a lot more um, stable, you could say, than emotions. Emotions tend to be relatively short-lasting. Often emotions change several times a day, but even for the more stable emotions they generally don't last more than weeks or months. Uh, while often spiritual 
issues tend to last years. So you don't have to worry about spiritual uh, emotional problems turning into spiritual problems as much. But yeah, the interaction and the linkage between the mind and the consciousness and the body is quite strong. So if we look at the consciousness, the consciousness is generally really uh, dominated by our thoughts, by our consciousness, what we think, what we remember. Um, the mind itself is very associative and this can be both good and bad. So the mind tends to drag everything which it can associate with into the current situation. So we tend to drag up also old problems from the past and even past beyond our own conscious recognition. Um, so we can remember things which we have forgotten or which are subconscious or subliminal or even from previous lives or even from other people. And this is where it can often get very confusing because our energies blend with the energies of our surroundings and of the people in our surroundings. So not always our mental problems are really our own mental problems. We might be in a way experiencing other person's worries, other person's associations even. So our mind is not a closed system. We have a kind of a very literally an open mind. Um, so if you look at the mind to really identify the problem, it can be much more tricky to pinpoint a problem in on a mental level than it is to pinpoint it on a physical level where you can often find a specific locus of the problem in the physical body or on an emotional level where often it also, also links quite strongly to the physical or a locus within our energy bodies, often our aura. So the mental energies are also much more fleeting, much more mobile, moving a lot. So if we're really trying to pinpoint and to resolve a mental problem, you really need to take the person out of their environment and to put them in a controlled environment. Preferably, I like to put people in a natural environment, a place where there is very little human energy and where the energy is very neutral. So um, just grab the person out of the city, uh, take them to a forest, put them under a tree, uh, let them in a way adapt to their environment for at least half an hour. By then the mental space will have cleared enough so that any mental problems can actually be pinpointed, seen and worked with. Because the mind is generally in a constant state of confusion because there are so many things going on with our relationships, with our colleagues, with our social environment. Um, if you're not able to really grab the client and to take them in such an environment, at least try to meditate with them to clear their mind, to rinse out all the other energies. Uh, because otherwise it is really not possible to pinpoint and identify mental problems very easily. So once you have rinsed out all the other yeah, uh, white noise, it is possible to really see the fundamental problems. And fundamental problems on a mental level are usually by um, the method of categorization not functioning correctly. Um, our brain is a categorizing engine, uh, discrimination engine. So things go into one category or another category. And we tend to uh, not associate things correctly. And this creates lots of problems. So the person is our friend, so we tend to accept them and accept them as good and therefore not identify them as maybe the cause for our problems or our suffering because they're our friend. Or we feel sympathy for a person and because we sympathize with them and try to help them we don't fight against them even though they might also be having a negative influence on us 
or we tend to over associate like maybe I've had a bad experience with a woman or with a man and instead of identifying that experience with that one person and that one time I associate it with problems with men and women uh, or with that person over an extended period of time maybe that person was angry with me because they were very stressed at work and even though they're not stressed by their job anymore I keep on having a problem with that person because I'm in a way have that memory and I'm applying that framework to all situations I run into with that person so I'm in a way um, having a prejudice problem so these problems are relatively easy to solve once they have been identified but the mind in itself is not able to do that it really needs to be in a way looked at from an other perspective and then they can see that because you're trapped in your own reality you cannot escape from your own reality so you really need other people to help with this process so last but definitely not least the spiritual problems um, spiritually we want to follow a certain path we have certain expectations of life if those expectations are not met, problems on all levels can manifest. Um, and also all levels of problem might lead to the spiritual pattern not being followed. And hence a spiritual problem. So a frustrated spirit will be a major source of sabotage in life. It will try to draw attention by just ruining and wrecking everything it can find it can lay its hands on so often a person going to a crisis and the crisis being escalating very rapidly is a clear indication that there is a spiritual problem an existentialist problem the person's life is not following the right pattern getting it on track can be very very difficult because the people will tend to try to stabilize the current situation to try to hold on to what they have instead of looking more in depth at what is really the cry for help which is emanating from my spirit and which is now manifesting themselves as everything in my life falling apart so the typical midlife crisis where everything seems to be slipping away or falling apart it's often a cry for help from the spirit and it doesn't mean you should try to develop more strategies more power of holding on to your life no it means you should create opportunities for your spirit to develop itself give your spirit the time it needs the attention it needs the resources the support it needs uh, by creating an environment where the spiritual growth is supported while your development is supported. Think of the dreams you had when you were young and go back to that also with your client and create opportunities, space for self-development. So I hope that this has helped you get a little bit of a perspective on all these different levels of problems and how to identify them.